Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Uh, this week I am making a cross between a bowl and a hollow vessel with this laminated bow blank uh, which will be partly hollowed out and a top or a finial put on it um, as you'll see in a, in a few minutes. So I marked the center a second ago and now I'm drilling a hole for the uh, woodworm screw. using a center finder to find the outer edges and try to uh, mill it down to uh, mostly a circle on the bandsaw. It's not going to be perfect. And I finish it, rounding it on the lathe. So this is, this helps a little bit to save on the tools. There I put in the woodworm screw into the four jaw chuck and screwing the blank onto the woodworm screw. My starting speed was about 500 RPMs. As you can see, it's, it's a little bit out of balance, which is normal if it's not perfectly round. So I'm using a Carter and Son bowl gouge to uh, make it perfectly round. And a little bit of a close-up shot now that it's round using the bowl gouge to clean the edges up a little bit. And starting to make the shape of the bowl, the outside of the bowl, before I make the, the mortise, just shaping it a little bit. So I, here I've removed the tailstock, as you can see, flattening the bottom, and I'll be making a mortise. Just rounding over the edges here a little bit more before I make the mortise. And I use various kind of cuts. I use the push cut, the pull cut, shear scraping. This is the skew chisel uh, helping to flatten the bottom. And here's the diamond parting tool to make the mortise. So with the mortise made, it's still on the woodworm screw at the moment and using some shear scraping to try to finalize the, the shape. Um, never really know exactly what shape I want until I'm kind of in the middle of the project. I may have an idea, um, but until you see what the wood looks like and might change your mind midway. I don't know if anyone else does that, but I do. Could be just me. You never know. And the speed on the lathe at this point was around 11 or 1200. And I start with 80 grit sandpaper and go all the way up to 320. I will speed this up so you're welcome. And some denatured alcohol to clean the surface before putting the sanding sealer on. Gives you a preview of what it's going to look like. And here's my mix of sanding sealer and denatured alcohol, 70% sealer and 30% denatured alcohol. Making sure there's enough on there to really soak in. Here I'm applying the Axe abrasive paste. If you haven't tried Axe, 
There is a link in the description to the product. It's a great price point and it does amazing things, as you'll see here. So here I'm buffing off the abrasive paste and next I'll be applying the, the Axe Polishing Paste. And here's the polishing paste going on and and I'll be buffing that off and you'll see the the sheen start to appear there. So I'm milling up some purple heart here on the bandsaw. I didn't have a thick enough piece, so I'm making some square pieces and then I'll glue those together. And then this is for what will be the, the top or the cover or finial. I'm not sure if it's really a finial. It's not going to be really small or anything, but it's, it's going to be the cover to the, to the opening. You'll see it all, how it all comes together in a minute. Before gluing up the pieces, I'm sanding them so they will have a surface, to, a better surface to stick to. I'm applying tight bond three to each surface before I put the next square on. As you can see, all the pieces were not the same size, which which is fine because I'm going to be um, making it semi round on the bandsaw after they're all dried and ready to turn. So putting several clamps on here, as many as I can fit really. And I leave that for overnight. It doesn't have to be overnight, but I did leave it overnight to make sure it dried properly as I'm gonna be turning it and putting a lot of force on it. So here I'm removing the, the blank from the woodworm screw, taking the woodworm screw out of the four jaw chuck and then using the, the mortise or the recess to put it back, to put the bowl in the chuck and to hollow out and shape the top and hollow out the, the vessel. using the bowl gouge to, to take some off of the top. And as you can see, I'm starting to round over the edges. Uh, this is not going to be a typical bowl. It's going to have a little bit of a, a vessel type appearance. Here I'm using the diamond parting tool to uh, start to make the, the width of uh, the opening on the top and, and how big that's going to be and back to the bowl gouge here to start hollowing that out. I actually tried a variety of tools here to help hollow this out appropriately to get around to the sides. Uh, they all worked okay in their own way. Uh, this is the easy wood tool, um, carbide tool, which, which worked pretty well. Between that and the, bowl, and the bowl gouge, I think those were the two that I used the most, but I did try a Robert Sorbet, um, it's kind of a swan neck tool, which I think I need a new tip for because it didn't work that well. Here's that swan neck or curved tool. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't stick with it very long. It definitely needs a new tip. Here I am back with the easy wood tool, carbide tipped. And if you notice, I'm on the other side of the bowl here. I have the lathe in reverse, uh, which, which really worked really well, actually, to, to help hollow out those sides. My lathe is towards the wall, so it's hard for me I don't really go around to the other side, so 
There, I was measuring the depth of that. You can see the chips flying out. That did work pretty well. Uh, sanding the, the top and the inside. Uh, same grits, 120 to 320. And sanding sealer for the top and inside. Axe abrasive paste time. So putting that on, rubbing it in, and buffing it off. Thank you, Axe. I really do love the product. It works really great. And the polishing, restoring paste from Axe. Again, to the top and the inside. Um, as I buff it off here, you'll see it start to shine. A wonderful sheen. Here's the purple, purple heart that I glued together. Taking other clamps, making sure it's pretty solid, taking it to the bandsaw and uh, trying to make a little bit more sense of all of these different sizes, trying to get them to round enough to put on the lathe to make them completely round. Probably could have taken more time to, to make them the same size as I was milling them, but I didn't. I guess I was too excited in a hurry. But it worked out. And with the bowl gouge to start, the lathe speed was around 500 here. Kept it on 500. Um, I think from there, I went up to about 700 after taking a little bit of material off. There I am going up to, I think it was 750. And measuring for the opening of, of the bowl, using a pencil to mark the line where I want to put a, a recess so it will sit down in the opening correctly. and the diamond parting tool to, to make the opening the correct size and making the lip appropriate to sit on the top of the bowl without too much wiggle. Here I am shaping the blank. Um, honestly, I didn't know really what I was going for. I was turning until I was happy with the shape. I think I changed my mind two or three times along the way, so. I don't know if anyone else does that or not. And I have this reversed in the chuck. I finally decided on a shape, simple kind of column shape with uh, a larger bottom and a smaller top. Here I'm making a recess and I will be putting in a turquoise gemstone. 
before doing that I'm using the Axe Abrasive and Polishing Paste. Buffing that on and off. And then the Polishing Paste. And I want to thank everyone so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do consider subscribing. It's free, and I post a new video every week. Here I am putting the gemstone on with some medium CA glue. And stick around uh, for another minute or two. There are several pictures, stills at the end. And smash that like button, guys. Thanks again, and as always, peace out.